My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike and kit reviewer for nearly 25 years. And this is part three of my Salsa Storm Chaser project build up. Completing the bike. So last time we got as far as the uh, bar and contact point, so we may as well uh, start there again because thanks to COVID and supply issues, you can see it looks like I've got two different bar, uh, sets of brakes on here. Uh, they're not actually, they're just two different colorways of the TRP Hilex, uh, which is their single speed hydraulic disc brake system. And although you can also upgrade it with a DI2 system as well. So that's uh, obviously no shifter guts in there, but this really nice drilled retro lever on there and a tan wall hood on that side and then black wall on this side. So as I had two sets of bar tape to test, uh, this Repente and also this Kinesis all weather bar tape as well, I figured if we're going to go mismatch with the brake levers, then we may as well get mismatch with the tape as well. And of course, that means following it up with one black pedal and one white pedal. Uh, just because, you know, it's kind of naturally a bit of a Frankenstein build, but, you know, weird, hey, Finley, <laughs> you know, weird looking things are sometimes absolutely splendid, aren't they, mate? Yes. Anyway, back to the salsa. So, uh, we've talked about the Thompson Post already, uh, with the kink in it there. Uh, just, someone was asking actually what did it, why there's a kink in the seat post. And it's because they can't build any setback into this head without really compromising the kind of function of it. So what they do is they put a kink in the post and create a setback that way. If you can imagine if that was a straight up post, the saddle clamp would be there. But by having the kink halfway down it, you get a standard setback on the post. So that's why Thompson do that. And we've already talked about the Thompson uh, stem. And the, oh, the other thing I was going to say, that I uh, Thompson did send me a matching seat clamp as well, but it's just a little bit shallow. It's the right diameter, but it's not, and but the paint ends there on this frame set. So that's why I've stuck with the salsa one, but yeah, that salsa clamp is absolutely iconic anyway. And talking of icons, I decided to go with DT for the wheels. Uh, I mean, the whole idea of this bike is for it to be super durable, super tough, uh, kind of winter warrior bike. So, I mean, DT Swiss pretty much write the rules when it comes to longevity on a wheel system uh it's not the new ratchet exp it's the classic star ratchet in there so you know pickups a little slow it's about 10 degrees i think on this but once connected this thing just drives and drives and drives you've got these really nice big spline hubs it's kind of mid i don't know slightly in the heavy side i guess for a gravel wheel set at 80 just under 1800 grams but 25 mil internal so Loads of volume on these brand new Schwalbe G1R tyres, uh, which I've heard rave reviews about, and Schwalbe were really keen to get me on when I spoke to them at Bespoke. So we've got new rubber on very well proven uh, DT wheels, and then I'm just going to flip the bike around so I can show you another bit of a bodge I had to do with the brakes to uh, complete the bike. So as well as having uh, different lever colours, uh, they also came with different calipers, not just in colour, but this is a front mount caliper, but all TRP had for the rear was a post mount caliper. So what I had to do, I rung around, I mean, there are TRP adapters available uh, to do this officially, but nobody had any in stock. So luckily, uh, Chevin Cycles had an old white brand, uh, 170mm flat mount to post mount bracket, and luckily, if you run that in reverse, then add some spaces in it, and then file down the back of it. I don't know if you can see in there, the silver section there. If you file down the back of it, there's just enough clearance on the rotor for it all to spin nice and smoothly, and it sits over the rotor in the right place as well. So, we have braking, both ends, in, you know, the same mismatch style as the levers on the bars and a lot of other aspects of this bike. It really is proving to be a proper celebration of the joys of COVID supply issues. So, that's it. The Salsa Storm Chaser, or at least in its first incarnation, is ready to ride. So, 
that's what I'm going to go do next. And I'll make sure I take the GoPro and bring you along to uh, see what the first impressions are of that gearing, of the brakes, everything else, as uh, I hit the trail. So, thanks very much to uh, Le uh, Leon UK, uh, the South Reporters, for sending the bike in. Thanks to everyone else who helped with the build, particularly Upgrade, SRAM, DT Swiss and Schwalbe. Uh, thanks very much to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Uh, they subscribe on a monthly basis with a small pledge that gives them early, exclusive and behind the scenes access to edits and they get them all ad free as well. So if you really like what I'm doing with the channel, please consider uh, joining me on my Patreon channel. Thanks to Giro Cycling for P and Petey's for sponsoring the channel as well. And thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe, please click for notifications. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up because that really helps it get shared and tell your mates about it as well because hopefully you'll enjoy, you've enjoyed seeing me build this bike up and you'll enjoy seeing me riding it and working through the various components. There's gonna be ongoing changes as I roll through. Like I say, this isn't the transmission I was initially gonna put on the bike, so expect to change on that as soon as I can get it sorted with the uh, parts that will fit to it. And uh, yeah, probably be changing a bunch of other stuff on it on a fairly regular basis as I go through winter. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV talking about my Salsa Storm Chaser Project single speed build.